I'll be glad in it. Hallelujah, hallelujah. To God be the glory for all the good things he's done in our lives. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Love you. I think so. Just a question. I think I think you're valid on that. And you know, you know, when we started at the beginning of the year in Philippians 3 10, it said that we may know him in the power of his resurrection and the fellowship. We know him in the, in the power of the resurrection and the fellowship of his suffering, conforming to his death, but the power of God is to know him, right? And and they didn't know they they Jimmy, they actually attacked John the Baptist. So John the Baptist, are you? Are you the one? Right? I mean, they was even asking John, though. They they were looking. They I don't think they asked Christ. Like, well, they did ask Christ. They said, are you the one? They, they didn't know what to look for. And now let's talk about now. Do we know the church? Do we, as a church, know who we are? It does the world know who we are? What's the expectation of the church? Do we know who, what we're supposed to be and who we are? Is that important? Uh -huh. The church. Do they know the church? Do we know? Or oh, like you said, I think you can focus on the what we is it. You talking about internally as a church or in the world of us knowing? All. Oh. oh, that's right. All. Oh. I think there's a couple of things here. I'm saying is, Bishop, we was talking about we, we, the whole title today is talking about. You shall receive power and need faith as a grain of mustard seed. <laughs> and we start off in Matthew. We're talking first about the vision on the mountain with uh, Jesus and Moses and Elijah. And the cloud showed up, the voice of God and Peter and James and uh, John uh, fell out uh, after he heard the voice of God. And then when he looked up, there was nobody uh, except for Jesus. And then when Jesus was coming down, he told him, tell him, don't say anything about this vision until I die and rise again. Uh, and then we we'll are focus on the fact is that in verse 12, Jesus said, because they was asking, was Elijah coming first? And you see in verse in verse 12, it said, I said to you, the Elijah come already, and they knew him not, but have done unto him whatsoever they listed. And then he also brought us and the rest of that scripture saying is, likewise, also, hey, Jimmy, that's interesting. Likewise, also, the Son of Man shall also suffer of them. And that them, Brother As was asked this, was the, the Pharisees and the Sadducees, I think it may also the rest of the children of Israel, uh, not all of them, but those, the majority of them did not recognize, did not know him. And, and the results of not knowing him, they do whatsoever they want to, uh, as far as the suffering that had to happen to Jesus Christ, suffering that John the Baptist had to go through, uh, because they didn't understand and didn't know. And now the day is, what do we? Are we in that same situation, that same condition, not knowing, uh, not recognizing, not being sensitive to the Holy Spirit? And, and the reason I put that in there because it is important for us to know, just like Philippians 3.10, that I may mean, know him. The fearful fact is I don't want to get to the point where Christ, when we meet Christ, uh, Brother Asin, is that God says, I never knew you. But I don't think that's going to be the case. I think he's going he gonna to know you. The question is, would you know him? Uh, as we walk this walk. Because the reason I want to throw in here with my title is this next one. Brother Asin, read that now. This is its continuation. Because this is why I want to be important to understand the power of Christ. Okay. Uh, Matthew 17, 14. Yeah. <clears throat> and when they were come to the multitude, there came to him a certain man, kneeling down to him and saying, Lord, have mercy on my son, for he is a, for he is lunatic and sore vexed. For oft times he falleth into the fire, and oft into the water. And I brought him to thy disciples, and they could not cure him. 
Then Jesus answered and said, O oh, faithless and perverse generation, how long shall I be with you? How long shall I suffer you? Bring him hither to me. And Jesus rebuked the devil, and he departed out of him. And the child was cured from that very hour. Now, now, look, you see, see, see he called them, <laughs> Jim, I think, he called them, oh, faithless and perverse generation. The question is, are we that same? Do we fall under that, that category if, if we don't operate on the faith? Now, finish this piece right here because they asked the question, Brother Addison. Go ahead, finish that. Then came the disciples to Jesus apart uh -huh. and said, why could not we cast him out? Uh -huh. And Jesus said unto them, because of your unbelief. For very, ver verily, I say unto you, if you have faith as a grain of mustard seed, ye shall say unto this mountain, remove hence to yonder place, and it shall be removed, and nothing shall be impossible unto you. Howbeit this kind of thing goeth not out by but by prayer and fasting. Now, now, Bishop mentioned this one before, but I, let's go back to the part about the piece I'm saying is first that verse in that 20, it says that if you have faith as a grain of mustard seed, if you have faith as a grain of mustard seed, I, the reason I'm tying that in there is you know the title is saying is that you shall receive what? Power, right? Power. And then he's telling you what kind of faith you need to have to execute this power. Because these are the same disciples that Jesus gave them power. He sent out about 70 of them, right? And they went out there to cast out demons. And they, were, they already had witnessed and performed power uh, or, or, or miracles or, or exercised power over demons and, and heal people. All right? They already done that. And yet, and then he said that they asked, well, why couldn't they do this to this particular one? And I'm saying that as far as having power, is it is it possible for us to not understand that we have power, but we have to have faith? We have to not operate in unbelief, because that scripture said that if you have power, right, nothing. Bishop, I just want to throw it in. He said in verse 20, nothing, Brother Addison, nothing shall be impossible. Well, he first stated because of their unbelief. Right. Okay. So you can believe until something the opposite of your belief changes your mind. Uh -huh, uh -huh. So I'm pretty sure that boy started spitting and fussing and throwing himself all over the place when they first tried to remove that demonic spirit within him right. and they lost faith. Right, right. So uh, I do believe uh, that no different than, than Peter, uh -huh. when he, he took his eye off Christ and saw the wind right. in the storm right. and began to sink. Yeah, begin He to lost faith. Right. Right. So, so, uh, but even in that scenario, he cried out, you know, save me. And Jesus yeah. reached out and grabbed him. Right. So even in your, when you begin to doubt. Right. Focus on Christ. Yes. Right. Um, when, when, when you receive Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. When we receive him, yes. When when you become saved, yes. When you first enter in into the kingdom of heaven. Yes. Well, uh, well become a citizen. Yes. Uh, it requires faith. Yes. You have to have the word of God. Yes. Because the word of God says faith cometh by hearing. Yes, sir. And hearing by the word of God. Right. So there is a measure of faith yes. that you have to receive the Lord. Okay. So you have been given 
faith. Yes. And faith is a fruit of the spirit. Right. So you, you have faith, but you also have unbelief. And that's the problem, isn't it? The, that's the problem. The, 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 the fix to that is the renewing of the mind. Yeah. And the confidence that what God said, he it will come to pass. What so if 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 God spoke to you no different than Jesus spoke to those disciples and sent out, then when you lose faith faith and, and, and you have doubt and unbelief that what you were sent to do is not going to manifest, then it's not going to manifest. Right. And the question is sometimes, like, if you know, like, you do the scenario with Peter, Peter had faith in God and Christ to save him, but he, had, he lost faith in walking on that water. Yeah. And the question is, go ahead, go ahead, Mr. Let me, ask, let me ask you one simple question. Uh, so what kind of problem did these men have after Pentecost? Yeah, they did have, you talking about when they was trying to witness. Oh, they, they were, they began to be persecuted. But they weren't they weren't the healing people though. Yeah, Remember that's that? what their the, their problem was. I mean reg regarding the issue that you're discussing now, how did those men fare after Pentecost? I thought you know, Fisher, I thought it was a mixed bag, right? Because there there was suffering. There was suffering. There was also victory. There was a, a growth in the church. The church blew up, really, as far as people coming into the to the kingdom, uh, receiving Jesus Christ as personal Lord and the Savior. I mean, it grew tremendously. But at the same time, what was accompanied with it was persecution uh, that, that caused many of them to scatter out throughout the world to preach the gospel. Remember that? Remember that? The saving, the saving the disciples, many of them went out, right? They went out they, because of persecution. Even okay. the disciples would be. Go ahead. They, I, I believe that because they witnessed the ascension of Christ okay. and spent time with him after the resurrection uh -huh. and then got then was was given a word, you know, instructions that they were and and received the Holy Spirit within them. Yeah. That they 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 had a boldness and a confidence with person that 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 they didn't have before because even Jesus said, how how great are those who have not seen me? Yes, sir. And 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 do the works of, of the God. Oh, of yeah, the best. Yes. Yeah. So I, so Bishop, I saw I saw I saw success because the church grew, but I also saw suffering that accompanied with it too. Right? And he said he said that even, that even when Christ was walking. He said, John the Baptist suffered. They did what somebody, he can't restore all things, and yet they didn't know him. And also they did to him, such as cut his head off. Uh, and then Jesus said, likewise, they would do that to the son of man, to him. And he did suffer, uh, but he suffered for us. He paid the price for us. So so when you said what, I'm just saying it was a mixed bag, right? This, Success as well as suffering that came with it? Personally. Well, 
I don't consider the suffering to be anything. Suffering is a greater evidence of success than anything else. Okay, yeah, I like that. Yes, sir. So you said how they fail, right? So that's we are called. We've been chosen to suffer with him. Okay. Amen. Amen. Uh so so if there's no suffering for the cause of the kingdom, but for the sake of Christ and the winning of the world to the kingdom, if there's no suffering on their behalf, then I, I, I think that's a sign that ought to call you to, to, to be, be concerned. Uh, concerned more than anything else. Wow, that's interesting. Yes. Okay. So, it's just, you see, after Pentecost, they evidenced every sign and symptom that what God had promised he fulfilled. Yeah, yeah. They had power. Uh -huh. uh, they endured persecution. Yes, sir. Without becoming discouraged, without murmuring or complaining. Woo. In fact, it said that they 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 rejoiced. Okay, you did, really did, right? That they were counted worthy. Yeah. <laughs> Come on, man. Come all, on. all of them, all of them, go on to be. Kill, Lord, it's gonna Come on! I just want to throw something. Go ahead. Go ahead. So, I don't think that that with them after Pentecost there is no question in my mind whatsoever. Uh huh. Uh, they all had issues when Jesus was with them in the flesh, but that ought to tell you something right there. Yeah. Yeah. And that is why Paul said in Corinthians that we once knew him in the flesh. Mm -hmm. Uh-huh, uh-huh. But uh -huh. we don't know him like that no more. Come on! <laughs> Wait. But see, that was never God's purpose for you to have Christ with you. Uh-huh. I was getting it, but Bishop, I like the part you're saying is that, you know, a lot of cases, as Brother Addison, if, if someone, uh, uh, you know, like the time you're on the Facebook thing, you're on that whatever that vir virtual thing, and sometimes you get some type of feedback, negative feedback, right? Oh, you're talking about, oh, yeah, never what, mind. go ahead. Yeah, whatever that conversation you have sometimes with somebody, you know, you yeah. get that type of attack. And, you know, I never thought about that. What, what, Bishop, what brought me to mind what you just said was whenever you get persecuted, Jimmy, it's really to rejoice. Because you must be doing something. Yeah. <laughs> something, something you doing right. Mm -hmm. And it is it is like amen. <laughs> amen. I mean, it's, it's 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 if you're not suffering, and I ain't talking about I guess maybe we're afraid of the word suffering, but if, if if we're doing the will of God and we're getting persecuted for it. And, and, and you know, in some cases they even got beaten and they, they rejoiced. That would I think Bishop was trying to say that mm -hmm. when they first time it was beaten, they came out and said, Whoa, hey y'all, uh, <laughs> we're part of we're fellowshipping in the suffering. We're doing God's will. This is not supposed to be strange. This is supposed to be something that indicates that you're doing the work of God. Mm -hmm. not, not before you look for it. You agree with that, right? You're not looking for it. But it's an indicator. It's something. Yeah, I, I do believe that it, it is a fruit of uh, of being in line or or, or, or ministering this gospel. Uh -huh. it, it, <laughs> I, I can agree with that, but I, I I still look at those disciples. While Jesus was here with them, they saw Jesus' humanity. Right. You know, and I and I think that 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 didn't help them. You know, in the fact that he did hunger, he did sleep, okay. he did get tired, he did need to wash himself. You know what I'm saying? He did, right. you know, probably got funky from from all that walking and everything. Right. Um, they they saw the the human uh -huh. nature of him. Okay. You know, so I think that's 
the the beauty of Paul. You know, he had to find him in the spirit. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. And so I think that's what made him, in my mind, uh, uh, more understanding and, and, and of of this gospel because he took time to know him mm -hmm. in the spirit. Yes, sir. And he did not have to look after or, or move past those hindrances of his human nature. You know, the, 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 the fact that he did get tired. You know, he, 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 he did have to suffer and, uh, and such. So well, not, you're talking about this, you're talking about the physical stuff, but I'm talking about he yeah. suffered because of the persecution on the cross. You know, he suffered, he was whipped, he was beaten, he was spit on. Yeah. And also, even like you said, they tried to throw him off a mountain one time, right? Yeah. They, they yeah. wanted to stone him a couple of times. They they did uh, attack him verbally. They did call him name. Mm -hmm. But I think that that humanity side Gene was showing is, I'm doing that because that's who you are, right? Mm -hmm. yeah. you, you have no choice but to have the humanity on you. But I want you to be able to understand that when you are preaching this gospel, your humanity, your physical piece of you is going to suffer, but you rejoice in that because you're doing his will, right? And what I want to throw in there though, let's look at that, look at the scripture again I'm saying is, because we said we receive power. The piece I'm looking at verse 20, look at verse 20 for me. What, what do you see in verse 20? I, I, I see the part about Nothing shall be impossible to you. If <laughs> you said we receive a measure of faith, right? You said we receive. All of us receive, every believer receives a measure of faith. Yeah. How much faith do I need to do all things? That measure. <laughs> I, I, I submit to the scripture says, Bishop, is it true right here? He said, uh, Brother Addison, verse 20, I mean, 17, verse 20, Jesus said unto them, because you don't believe, that's your issue, for verily I say unto you, if you have faith, not the measure of faith, but if you have faith as a grain of mustard seed, you shall say unto this mountain, which is the issue that you may face, issue that I may face, remove his to yonder place, and look what he says here. I'm talking about this power. Though. It shall remove. And Perfect. nothing shall be impossible. Go ahead, Elder, unto you. Do you think it was just an allegory or do you think he actually meant a literal mountain? I, th I, think, I, think, it's, I think it's a combination. I believe he's talking about issues. Uh, I don't. I don't see. I mean, unless you see, I don't see the glory of God getting moving a physical mountain. But you know, that I'm not saying that's not impossible. I'm just saying is that I think as believers, and that's why to come down to the level we're living day to day, you have mountains, you have issues that is in front of you, and God is saying is if you have faith as a grain of mustard seed, you can speak to that mountain. Well, if if I leave this in content in 1720 and keep it to what the subject was. Yes, sir. He says, because of your unbelief. Right. Topic. Yeah. Topic. Unbelief. Yeah. For verily I say unto you, if you have faith as a grain of mustard seed. Yes. You shall say unto this mountain, yes. unbelief, uh -huh. remove hence to yonder place and be thou removed. And because you have no unbelief, nothing yeah. shall be impossible unto you. Right. Now, I do want to, right, Brother Isaac, can I back that up a little bit? I was thinking is that if he'd been in content, like you said, they wanted to know why. I mean, look at the sub. The real subject was the real subject was the mountain, right? Which was why couldn't I cast? Why couldn't we cast this out of this person? Right? That was the issue. And then he said the reason you couldn't because of unbelief. 
But if you did, if you had belief, if you had faith, just as a grain of mustard seed, just, you know, that small seed, you could speak to what mountain? Elder Johnson, I'm saying is the mountain that was before them, correct me wrong, but as in the mountain that was before them, well, they couldn't cast out this, this spirit. I, I, I still would go to the mountain was unbelief. Well, you call it a mountain unbelief, or is it? Could I? Could I? Because they 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 spoke to that child and they couldn't cast him out. With the animal, that was a mountain. So their their mountain was unbelief. Would you? In my in 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 my understanding, that's their mountain because we we move from faith to faith. And when a, a mustard seed is so small, it's like a pinhead. Could I, could I, could I, could and, I, could I, and, and, but yet it grows into a big tree. So, and we are to move from faith to faith. To grow, you grow in faith. Uh, I, I, I just, I, I just believe the mountain is unbelief. Well, his, his, I want to use a par uh, analogy, something that goes with that, and see why I think different. And it's that I want to uh, drive my car to Stone Mountain, but I have no gas. Now, the issue is I need to get to Stone Mountain. No, the issue is you need to get some gas. <laughs> yeah, I know it. But, but <laughs> otherwise, I need, I, I need, that's what I'm trying to say. That my issue, my mountain is my objective, what I'm trying to do, what I'm trying to do. The issue is what's keeping me from doing that, right? And right, what's keeping me from doing it was my not having gas. I'm saying to you, when I have it, when I have an unbelief, I can't You ain't got no gas. I ain't got no gas. Okay, so your unbelief it, is your I got, That's an issue too, right? I don't worry, you're right. There's a compounded issue, is how I'm looking at it. It's compounded. Your your your, your ability to 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 achieve your goal right. is no gas. Unbelief. Right, right. unbelief. Same thing. Right. So that is your mountain. So though you're you going to a mountain, <laughs> <laughs> your real mountain is no gas. But how do how do I move uh, unbelief? I mean, that's by a God's I mean. word, through God's word, <laughs> by hearing and hearing by the word of God. I think right by faith, right? That faith I need, yeah. right? I need faith. I know faith overrides unbelief. Oh, uh, Bishop, can I have unbelief and faith at the same time? The word of God overrides. Yeah, I believe you can. I believe you can have faith and belief at the same time because you can have faith to do something until you need to do it. Okay. <laughs> so that means you had faith? <laughs> I, I, I don't know. I, I, but the bottom line is that I want to get to this part about nothing shall be impossible unto you. How do I get there? And you said, I think you said it, forget it. I got to move unbelief out of the way. Yeah, you 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 have to you have to hear the word and hearing by the word of God. That removes doubt and unbelief. So I have to move that mountain. That particular that's a big mountain, isn't it? Doubt and unbelief. Yeah, unbelief. That is the the greatest mount. I mean, <laughs> you know, there there's there's a a, a a saying that the greatest power that Satan has is that he don't exist. 